This video is brought to you by Earmen, makers of portable audio hardware. Click the link in the description box below for more information. What kind of hardware do you use to listen to music outside of the house? Today we're going to be looking at portable audio systems. A video like this is sure 100% to trigger the whataboutas in the audience. So just a polite reminder that this video is more of an overview than it is a deep dive. What we gain in breadth, we lose in depth. And also, I'm only going to be talking about gear with which I've had direct experience. So this is more of a snapshot than it is a comprehensive look. And as we will see, portable audio in 2022 is still very much a game of quality versus convenience, or rather inconvenience. Because as we will see, when we gain in sound quality, we also pick up compromises along the way. And I wanna call out those compromises today because I think basically pretty much everything in portable audio is compromised in some way. There is no perfect solution. Now I have three requirements when I'm out and about in Berlin and beyond with portable audio systems. Number one, I want to be able to play lossless audio, so CD quality and above, wherever possible. Not always, I'm not an idealist always, but where possible I like to be able to have high quality audio available to me. That then feeds into my second requirement, and this is a bit of a spicy one. I don't do micro SD cards anymore, nope. They're too fiddly, they're too much of a pain because my lossless audio library is three terabytes and I might only have a one terabyte micro SD card to put into my portable player or to carry around with me. And that means I'm always gonna be juggling what's on that SD card. It's a royal pain in the ass. I know some of you won't agree with that in terms of the inconvenience factor, but for me, it is so fiddly, especially when we come to my third requirement, is that all portable audio systems that I use must be able to do streaming services like Spotify, Tidal, Cobas, but also something called PlexAmp. PlexAmp is an app which talks to my Plex server in my kitchen, and I can stream or download content from that Plex server, whether I'm here or out and about. It's fantastic, and I can stream or download in lossless quality whenever I want to. In order to maximize portability, I'm only going to be talking about IEMs today. IEM means in-ear monitor. It's just a general term for earphones that go in the ear or sit in the ear. And I think the conversation with portable audio starts with the Apple AirPods Pro. Now, I've covered these before in a previous episode. I think they're wonderful. I think they're supremely comfortable. I can wear these all day, no problem. They're fantastic for podcasts. They're even better for phone calls. And I've actually swapped out the tips on them for some Deconi tips, which for me, reduce some of the air turbulence if I'm on my bike, but they also reduce, yeah, a little bit of the bass impact and the bass on these is not especially strong. And that really kind of brings us to the, the compromise with these is as good as they are, they're not all that really when it comes to listening to music. Now what are, are the Sony WF-1000XM4. I've made a video about these before. Now for me, this is my pick of sort of Bluetooth true wireless IEMs for when I wanna to listen to music. So if I'm not making a phone call or if I'm not listening to a podcast, I'll pick up these. And obviously like the AirPods, these pair with a smartphone. And then depending upon what smartphone is in play, 
determines the quality of the Bluetooth stream. I think the issue of codec quality is many times overplayed. Yes, I think LDAC with these and an Android phone sounds better than AAC with these with an iPhone, but it's just there's just a, a hair's width in it. It's not going to make me not use my iPhone and always use my Android phone. There's just not enough in it for that. So when people say LDAC blows all other Kodaks out of the water, no, they're talking crap. Maybe it's a little bit better, but just a tiny bit. Now the Sony, I think, are fantastic for bass. They're unbelievable when it comes to layer separation. But the compromise is that I think they're a little bit muddy in the mid-range. They don't have the vocal clarity of more traditional wired IEMs. And when I say more traditional wired IEMs, I have a pair of Ico OH-1. I love these, these are a hybrid design. So a dynamic driver and then balanced out amateur drivers. Now, if I want to use these with my smartphone, I still have to go Bluetooth. And what I do for that is I use this thing. I love this thing, actually. This is the iFi Go Blue. So this is a portable DAC and headphone amplifier that connects to a smartphone using Bluetooth, the blue in the Go Blue. It has a really nice little volume wheel on it. It has excellent connectivity in that we get both the Pentacon balanced and the three and a half mil single ended. So balanced nerds are going to be well sorted here. But also what I like about this is that it sounds very open and spacious, especially in the upper mids. It really teases out the vocal clarity from these, from these ICO IEM. So these for me are a good match for those wondering because I know people will be asking, well, what about the Fio? I do have a Fio, actually, the BTR5. I don't think it's the very latest version. I don't like this quite as much as the iFi. This, for me, is a little bit grayer in tonality than the iFi. And changing volume in pocket without actually pulling this out is much easier because all I have to do is kind of feel for the volume wheel and it moves quite nicely. It's a bit like the crown you find on an Apple Watch, but a bit bigger. And then there's a couple of extra features on this and they're not done with DSP, they're done with active components. There's switchable soundstage widening and switchable bass enhancement, but the bass enhancement is super subtle and I don't always want it. On some IEMs, yes, I don't want bass enhancement on these though. But what's the compromise then? Well, the compromise here is Bluetooth. Yes, this does LDAC, I think it does Aptex, it does AAC, and then when you turn it on, it tells you what codec, there's a little woman that lives in here who speaks to you through your earphones and tells you what codec is in play. But yeah, Bluetooth, I guess, from a technical idealistic standpoint is fundamentally compromised because it's not yet lossless. Now, if I want more clarity and overall jump factor in terms of dynamics, I will go for these IEMs. These are Campfire Audio Holocene. Now, when Campfire sent me these, they also sent me the Mammoth, which is a, a basier, it's a hybrid design. This is not, this is three BA drivers. And I thought I would prefer the Mammoth because I've loved the Polaris in the past. I like that abundant low end punch that it gives me. But actually, no, I prefer the Holocene to the Mammoth because of their clarity and because of their beautifully extended top end. They're not as punchy as the Ico down below, but that's probably the only compromise that I could really think of with these. Let me just put these down for a moment. So I tend to use the Holocene with a dongle DAC. Now there are many dongle DACs on the market, but I think the, the most universal of them all is the AudioQuest Dragonfly range. So if I connect this Dragonfly Red to my iPhone using the camera connection kit, I've got a fairly decent portable audio solution here. I've made a video about dongle DACs before. Now the compromise here is this interlink cable which isn't especially robust. So if you're folding this up 
and then putting it in your pocket, that's already kind of in the awkward zone already because like, you know, your headphones connect here and this takes a bit of a beating. It's not just on an iPhone. So if I just put these down for a moment, if I take, where is it? The Cobalt, it's just, I'm just showing these as concepts really. So here's the Dragonfly Cobalt. Let me take the Dragon Tail, which is for Android phones. I have an Android phone here behind me, my Google Pixel 6. Now this, I guess you call it what, interlink cable. It's okay, but again, it's, it's not amazing for pocketing. This is still vulnerable to, I guess, breaking just here internally if you use it enough. It's not the most elegant solution on the market. I mean, obviously Bluetooth, true wireless IEMs like the Apple and the Sony are the most convenient. So yeah, the compromise here, as far as I'm concerned, is the awkwardness of pocketability of this and the fragility of this interlink cable. Now, even better sounding than the Dragonfly Cobalt with more abundant window wipe transparency and greater dynamics and just an all round punchier sound is everybody's favorite, or at least my favorite anyway, the Chord Mojo. This is for me, yeah, it is the best sounding DAC beneath 500 bucks. It really is, even now, five years later. Now, I can get a better sound from my Campfire Holocene with this DAC and headphone amplifier if I connect it into the data port here, but you can see already what's going on, right? You can see that I've got this. <laughs> what a mess. Yeah, I could get a shorter USB cable, but it's still, like, how do, you, how do you pocket all of this? Even with a short cable, how would you do it? I don't know. Five years later, since this was launched, I still haven't got a, a good answer for that. So for me, this isn't really so much portable as transportable. I can use this at home or I could use it at the office if I had an office. I don't have an office, well, I do, but it's here, so it's at home. I think I would be far more likely to use the Mojo in a static home hi-fi system because it really is that good. And yeah, it's just not really portable. Some people say, oh yeah, but when you get on an airplane, you can lay all this out on your tray table, I'll come to that later. So, so far we've looked at devices that connect to smartphones, either over Bluetooth or hardwired. And obviously a smartphone gives us Spotify, Kobo's, Tidal and Plexamp. But now we're about to leave smartphones behind in favor of something that a few years ago I said was probably over. I'm still not convinced that they're not, but I did ask a couple of companies to send me a couple of models at the end of last year. One of those is the iBasso DX300. Some people call these portable players. Some people call these DAPs, digital audio players. Yeah, a second device. And we can park our smartphone because everything is handled here. We've got USB recharging socket up here, and then we have three different headphone sockets on the bottom for two kinds of balanced and one kind of the usual three and a half mil that most people know. I use a two and a half mil balance sometimes because I have earphones that have that kind of connectivity. So this is basically an audio focused smartphone but without the smartphone functionality. And yes, if you're wondering, this sounds far, far better than an LG V30 or V40 or the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III. I know that they've put a headphone socket on it and they're making a big deal about it, but I don't think that Sony sounds all that good. It, I don't think it sounds as good as the LG, but I've only had a brief listen, so I must qualify it you know, with that. This has a really lovely, very beautiful top end. It makes music sound so well extended and delicate and finessed. It really teases out those qualities. Where it probably comes up a little bit short is on low end weight. But as you can see, it is a, it's a bit of a brick. And you can also see that it is running Plexamp. 
I've been listening to some Eat Static. Very good record. Now, with this portable player, I tend to ditch the Holocene in favor of another campfire earphone, which I think is a, a better overall balanced earphone. Oh, this is what I love about wired earphones. <laughs> I'm gonna have to untangle this. I don't know why, because we just pulled this out. I'll go, here we go. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Okay. This is the Campfire Audio Ara. This is my favorite of all Campfire earphones. It has a fleshier bottom end, which I think compensates nicely for the slightly lighter bottom end of the iBasso. So I use these two in tandem when going out and about out of the house. Sometimes I even listen to them in the house, actually. It's that good. But what's the compromise? Well, I think it's quite obvious in that this is the size of my Google Pixel 6, but it's also a bit of a thick boy. It's not especially heavy, but it's another device that I have to manage. I have to keep the battery charged. I only get about maybe seven, eight, maybe nine hours out of this between charges. So it doesn't last as long as a smartphone does, but it does provide all of the smartphone qualities that I look for when it comes to streaming out in the street. So I really like this thing, but it's still compromised from the outset, not because of the product itself, but because of the product category of dApps. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a, in a bit as to why that, you know, having a big chunky player might only be good for me in certain situations. This next IEM, I have never experienced an IEM like this before. Not ever. Not in terms of amazing sound quality, and I mean amazing, in that it makes a lot of other IEMs sound a bit wrong. So when you first listen to it, you go, this, this sounds a bit weird. And then, you, then you're like, oh no, this is how things are meant to sound. Because dynamics are excellent, detail retrieval is off the dial. So enough with like the teasing. This is the Empire Ears Odin. I'm hopefully gonna be able to pull this apart properly. Now, the other reason that this is a very unique IEM is that it's extremely, extremely expensive. So if you're the kind of person that gets angry about high-end audio pricing, you should just stop watching now or go and make a cup of tea, maybe chamomile tea, help you relax. The rest of you should know that this is an earphone that sells for 3,400 US dollars. Inside here, there are 11 drivers, two dynamics for the low end, five balanced armature for the mid range, and then electrostatic drivers for the top end. Is that 11? Does that total to 11, Olaf? Anyway, so this thing has a two and a half mil connection on it, so I can use it with my iBasso, but I don't. I tend to use it with this thing, which is the Aslan Kern. SP2000, which is another very expensive DAP. It's way more expensive than the iBasso. In fact, two grand more expensive. I'll put all the prices on the screen. So if I haven't spoken the price, hopefully I will remember to put it on the screen during the edit. And so, yeah, this connects into the Aston Kern here. Now, this is another DAP, another portable player. It's booting up right now. Now, I do think that this portable player sounds a bit better than the iBasso. It's not quite as sort of beautifully extended up top. It's a little bit darker, a little bit more hooded, but it has much more weight to the sound. I don't know why, but to me it does. But unlike the iBasso, this does not run a stock version of Android. We can get streaming services like Koba's Spotify Tidal, but they have to be installed by Aslan Kern's APK installer. So at time of taping this video, there is no way to get Plexamp onto this device. And I swear by Plexamp, I use it all the time to playing music off my server at home, like my private streaming service that I have set up in my little office area. So this is a, a better sounding portable player than the iBasso, but 
sound quality isn't everything if I can't access the music I want. Because sometimes offlining content, and you can do it inside these APK apps, but they're a bit, the apps behave a bit jankily sometimes. They're not always very snappy. I don't, I mean, here's my offline library here. You can see that possibly. But when I was testing this a couple of months ago, it, yeah, it wasn't super smooth, not as smooth as the iBasso. So there's the compromise there. You have to trade off sound quality for greater functionality if you want to have Google Play Store enabled apps. So I'm hoping the next generation of Astle and Kern players actually go to a normal stock version of Android, but I'm not holding my breath. But this, you know, this is about a $7,000 portable audio solution. It sounds incredible. This is probably, I mean, this is really the very summit of what's possible with portable audio. That's why I'm showing it here. I'm not showing it because you should go out and buy it. I'm just showing you this is probably as far as one can go in terms of getting amazing sound from IEMs out and about in the street or on a plane or on a train or a bus or whatever. How do I decide which one of these setups I'm going to use on any given day? Now that is determined by a number of factors. The first one being, how far am I walking? So if I'm just going up to the coffee shop, I'll probably reach for the AirPods or the Sony, depending on whether I want to listen to a podcast or music. If I'm going for a longer walk, I'll probably take a portable player slash DAP and one of the, you know, the higher end IEMs, because obviously I want to maximize the quality of my walk, right? The sound quality of music whilst I'm out and about on a longer walk. But that decision is also influenced by the weather. So in the summer, you know, I'm not wearing a big coat. So there isn't the pocket really to put the portable player into. It's a bit of an issue. So really in the summer, I tend to kind of fall back to a dongle DAC and a phone or the Bluetooth stuff. Because here's the thing, like people like to really rag on Bluetooth as being compromised, and it is, but it still sounds fantastic. And there are advantages to Bluetooth and not even the three and a half thousand dollar Empire Ears Odin IEM can match. I've seen people talk about how they go on a plane and they have their really expensive DAP and their really expensive IEMs and they lay it all out on a tray table and they're sorted for their flight. And whenever I see somebody saying that or I read that, I'm always asking myself, but don't you wanna cancel the noise of the aircraft first? Because the passive isolation in many of these IEMs, especially the campfire, especially the Empire Ears, is fantastic. That does block out a lot of noise, but it doesn't block out as much as the Sony noise cancelling IEMs. I mean, personally, if I was going on a flight, I would take the Sony and probably a pair of AirPods Max if I you know, didn't want to fall asleep too soon. I think noise cancelling is, is my number one priority when I'm on a plane. Not that I've been on a plane for like two years. If I'm on a train, I might just take the portable player and the high-end IEMs because yeah, there's a table there. I can lay it out. There's not a lot of noise. Well, not on German trains anyway. Maybe on British trains, there's a lot of noise on those. German trains whisper quiet. I'm joking, they're not all like that, but a lot of them are. So yeah, I don't need to cancel noise so much on trains. If I'm out in a busy part of the city, again, noise cancelling is really useful. But if I'm walking around, I don't know, the Tiergarten or Tempelhofer Feld, which is the old airport, big, expansive area with not a lot of traffic noise, yeah, I'll go with a portable player or a dongle DAC with a pair of Campfire or Empire Ears IEMs. But equally, like, I mean, I do use the Go Blue quite a bit. So if I'm just nipping up the street to a shop and want to just listen to some wired IEMs because maybe I, I'm not into the Sony's slightly murky mid-range as much and I want to pull out a pair of Campfire or the Echos, I'll reach for this because it's easy to pair with a smartphone, not going very far. 
So I guess what I'm saying is, is that I'm not always an idealist when it comes to portable audio's implementations. I know many people are, and they will listen to their uber high-end portable player until somebody prizes it from their cold, dead hands. I don't feel that way. As you can tell, like it's different solutions, different systems for different situations. And they're all compromised in some way or other, all of them. If you understand that I cannot talk about everything, in fact, I can only talk about a very narrow range of products in general and also in this video, if you get that and you dig that, please give this video a like down below. If you like my attitude towards portable audio from Bluetooth True Wireless IEMs all the way up to portable players with crazy expensive wired IEMs, then please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. No, I don't cycle in traffic on my bike with these in. <laughs> it's okay. It's like, no, it's, it's, I can't really. I know. It's, it's, it's no problem. Like, okay. <laughs>